Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we are doing some classic botanical painting. We're going to do a beautiful narcissus with its bulb still attached just like the Victorians did. It's going to look so cool and I'm really excited because I've never painted one like this for you before. So grab your paints and let's get started. Well this feels quite, yeah like I think I said in the intro, a classic De Winton Paper Co approach and oh, really annoyed that little bit of fluff on the page. I can't get it off. One sec. Okay, got it. <laughs> right, let's go then, shall we? So we're going to do a Narcissus, but we're going to include the bulb because, uh, well, it's 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 a rather nice style of, of approaching something like a botanical painting. Um, so I'm going to begin with a, a pencil stem. Just a nice bit of a curve. And we'll have a few flowers coming off. So, um, so narcissus are interesting. They're miniature daffodils, but they don't always angle over. Some of them just sort of angle their heads upwards. Um, we'll have one or two though, one or two flowers. Um, but we'll have everything coming from the one bulb. So it's very important that we um, have it all coming down into this central point because that is where our bulb is going to sit. Um, so they're all spurting out of this one bulb and that's the big difference I suppose um, between Narcissus and Daffodils. So we'll add, we'll add extra leaves but that's our main, our main need for the pencil and we're going to have lots of little roots coming out from this bulb um, and then up here we'll have a flower there so I've done a little curve just to sort of show where the base of the flower will sit and I will just do a very faint trumpet shape a little tapered trumpet and we'll do one here And remember, recently we've been talking about anyone who's not that keen on drawing, to use this to pause, take a screenshot, and then use it as your line drawing guide. I'm perfectly happy for you to do that. That seems a very sensible thing to do. Okay, so now I'm going to just lightly rub out the heavier pencil on the page. Just makes our life a lot easier for rubbing it out later on. Now I am going to begin with the flowers because we need to make sure there's enough room for those petals. So lovely cadmium yellow is going to work beautifully and we'll get a bit of cadmium orange in there as well. It's so nice to be painting flowers that are actually out in bloom in the garden. Even though I don't know if you can hear the rain crashing, <laughs> crashing outside. But um that's the sort of the joy of an outdoor office, I suppose. Okay, size two brush, a sort of, um, I, I, I've heard um, paint consistencies being referred to as cream, coffee, tea. This is a sort of coffee. It's some. It's it's sort of not too thick, but it's not too dilute. And we're just going to create the trumpet, the front side of that trumpet, and. I am going to just go straight in. We're going to do a sort of quite sort of expressive, loose-ish style of our of our narcissus to begin with, and I'm going to paint in some petals just either side there, fanning out from that central point, one there, and just coming down there as well. And I'm going to take some cadmium orange. And I'm just going to press that in the centre there. And that's going to give us some lovely, expressive petals. And we'll do it again here. So brush strokes, we'll get a nice frilled top to that trumpet. And again, we'll have squashing the brush out either side and it can curl and do all sorts of interesting things then one coming down maybe we'll see two either side this time and then some cadmium orange just in the middle there 
and maybe a little on the tips as well just to give that nice bit of light and shade now as we travel down to the root we need some very different colors so i am going to wake up the brown earthy tones so we've got buff titanium yellow ochre got raw umber here as well lots of great earthy tones and then over on the other side of my palette I was sorry I'm just always amazed at how different raw umber looks once you've woken it up um, we've got burnt sienna and raw umber no no raw sienna my siennas are next to each other and my umber is over there we're going to build up the layers. The roots are very, very pale. So I'm going to use a size zero brush and I'm going to begin by painting in lots of little tangled, tangled roots. And whilst those are just drying, I'm going to take a bit of Burnt Sienna and Payne's Grey, get that really nice deep dark colour there. And I just want to sort of drop in a few tufts of, of, of soil, basically, just on the, near the root, where, where the root sort of meets the bulb. And we'll be coming back to those. I just wanted to get that in whilst it was still still wet okay so going back to our bulb i'm going to create the bulb shape with starting with buff titanium and it's going to come down and just touch the shape there touch the roots that's great we're happy with that a little bit of yellow ochre because it has got a sort of golden shine to it as well and maybe even a tiny bit of cadmium yellow and we want to sort of give that a, maybe a moment to dry just a little bit we want it still damp but I want to pop in some darker color that bleeds but doesn't travel too far in so whilst we wait for that I'm going to start mixing up some colors for my leaves now when we see the leaves above ground we see the, the fresh green but when they are submerged in the soil the light doesn't get them and they're a lot paler so whilst i've got green gold and sap green mixed up here i also want maybe a little bit of yellow cadmium yellow and we're just going to mix it with a bit of green gold and get it really dilute and we'll have it so it, it's got barely any color in it and maybe a bit of buff titanium will be good as well for that okay so that's had a little bit of time just to settle in and I'm going to take my dark brown which was the burnt sienna and Payne's gray mix and with my size zero brush I'm going to sort of test just how wet that still is so that's pretty nice because I want to get a bit of a bleed and so what I'm going to do is just paint in a little bit of texture on there maybe even some darker more Payne's grey just up from the bottom And that's looking pretty nice we'll go back in for a bit of detail once it's fully dried but we've got a really nice shape there okay i'm just going to change my water over and now it's time to build the leaves so i'm going to start with just a a simple leaf here and i'm actually going to start with this pale pale color and i'm going to paint the whole thing 
and I'm going to get to the bottom and it's going to be almost nothing. I'm going to add in a bit more green gold and come from the top and just come a sort of stop a bit short. A bit grainy my green gold, there we go. And then I'm going to get my sap green at the top and use that. And what we get is a really clever way of getting that colour ombre down the leaf for that first wash. And there we go, it sort of bleeds into very little. And we're going to do that. We'll do this for a little one as well. Don't want too much paint on the brush. We'll just send it down like that. And even if you get a little bloom like that, you can just sort of tease it a little and it'll start to play ball. Okay, so for our ones, for our actual stems of flowers, we can just do the same because our flowers will have dried by now. Size 2 brush is good. It gives you the ability to paint quite thinly but also have enough paint on the brush that you can have to travel you can travel quite fast and far okay let's get the green gold in there I think it's looking quite nice already and the stems do tend to seem to have a slightly more yellowy green feel okay so the sap green going in at the top there we'll be adding a little bit of extra brown papery sepal up around there but for now this is looking great so I'm going to fill in more stems and get that all ready for the next stage so I've painted all the ones I drew in but I'd like to add a few more and that's absolutely fine too just keep on using the same technique of adding the green in and then the sap green. We'll be defining a few of these a bit more later on, so don't worry if you feel like you're just sort of creating a bit of a, an unsure picture of what's what. Also, you can see, because we're painting so nice and lightly, I can paint one of these that just sort of sits in behind the, uh, the main Narcissus stem there. So whilst we wait for these to dry, whoops, I just lost a brush. Um, I'm going to just return my attention up there. So a little bit of yellow to the outer edge, the, the back edge there of the trumpet, and then I just clean my brush off and just Spread the colour down. There we go. And I'm going to go down to here and that will have dried really nicely now. So I can just sort of begin to add in a little bit more detail. And this just comes from looking at a photo or the, the real, real thing if you've got it. They can be quite nice to have in vases and things. So it's just important to keep that roundness of the shape and just adding texture really.
And then I can also add a little bit of shadow and texture and maybe just a few extra little strands to the roots as well. In the final stages now, it's time to add a bit of detail, so I'm using my size zero brush, taking some sap green, I'll do this one here, and just taking it from the top, maybe a little bit more than that, quite dilute, and just sending it down the leaf. I want to sort of get a little bit of a streakiness. So I'm almost dry brushing it as I go down. And then take some Payne's Grey and add it to my sap green. And then now I'm really focusing on sort of the precision of the edge of the leaf. And just, just adding a few extra little lines there. But we don't want it to go all the way down. We want it to sort of ombre out. Um, now, I'm going to take a bit of yellow ochre and just place it on the stems there. And a little bit of shadow. It's the challenge is to try not to make it too dark. So don't overwork it. Okay, so we're going to just finish off popping in some of this green to the stems. And so for the stems themselves, I wouldn't go too heavy on adding too much green, but maybe just a little bit of sap green sort of down the side. But I wouldn't go much further than that. To finish off, I'm adding some yellow ochre to my cadmium yellow, and I want to create a bit more sort of depth and texture on my Narcissus petals. So I'm painting out from the centre there and, and blending it a little um, and maybe just a little bit coming up. So I've let that dry and I rubbed out the pencil and here we have a really beautiful little Narcissus flower on the bulb. And I think you'll agree, there were not too many complicated processes in this. Um, and if you rather enjoy this style of flower painting where we really study the real thing, but we aren't spending hours and hours on it and you get a really effective result without too much, um, then why don't you try my book, New Botanical Painting? It was my first ever book that came out. Um, oh, I'm just reaching. I'm just reaching around the corner for it. Here we are. <laughs> Should totally have had that ready um, because it is fantastic for beginners. It's got exactly the same style where we do really quite impressive flowers, but 
they are all done in this new botanical style. So anyway, you can find signed copies of that in my Etsy shop episode notes below with all the details. But for now, I just need to say thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again next time. Bye!